Hello everyone and welcome to Top Tips for Archaeology Graduates. Today we are joined by Rob. Hi Rob, how are you today? Hi, I'm really well, thank you. So Rob is a primary school teacher and as you could probably tell from his background, from uh, the screen behind him, and earlier on in our series of talks, we spoke to Dan, who was studying for his PGCE in primary school education. And so we thought we'd now we talk to Rob, who is also a graduate at York, but a bit further on in his career and now a year six teacher. So Rob, could you tell us a little bit about your job as a primary school teacher? What's so, it like? Yeah, as a primary teacher, um, my role is to be in charge of the education and care of a class of children. I'm a year six teacher, so I'm at the end of the key stage in primary. My children will be going on to secondary, if I can believe it, very shortly at the end of this year. Um, and the role of the primary teacher is to deliver the entire primary curriculum. Um, obviously, as everyone remembers, back to school, um, the, one of the wonders of primary is that you're in your class for your year with your teacher. And so I teach um, maths and English in most mornings and then in the afternoon I might be an art teacher or a music teacher or a science teacher or a topic teacher and I get to share my love of history and geography with the children that way. I might be outside running laps um, in PE or I'm going swimming or I'm taking them on residential in a couple of weeks. It really is a varied job that's wonderful to do um, and the main thing is getting the best out of the group of children that have been put in your care for the whole year. That's the wonderful part of primary teaching, that ability to watch them grow and, and help them out. Um, it, sounds, it sounds like for you it's a really satisfying job. What, what are some of the things that you enjoy in terms of seeing this, the, the, the children learn, I guess, and grow? What, what, what are kind of the bits that you enjoy most about that? It is. It sounds so cliche, but it's those eureka moments. It's those ones where maybe they haven't got it at the start of the week or you know that you know, they struggle with this aspect of it. And a lot of it comes from them. It's not that I've got all the answers, but it's like teasing out of them the fact that they can do it. It's um, coming at a problem another way. Um, you know, if I'm throwing the same things at them over and over again and it's not working, then it's down to me to sort of change tack. Um, you know, if someone's a more visual learner, then you know, we'll, we'll get out the activities that are visual. And if they work better with the problem solving things, then can we put a real world spin on it? And that's not just for things like maths, it's some children write better um, for, you know, knowing what their audience is. Not everyone's a story author, but they'll write me an absolutely fantastic, um, you know, topic piece or something like that. Um, and it's been finding, finding ways to get the best out of them. That is my actual job. And that is the bit that, that really works for me. That's lovely. And... I guess actually quite creative in that you've got to to really get to know each of the individual children and, and think creatively about how how they they solve problems and how you solve problems in the classroom. Can I ask about the other side of that a little bit then in terms of what do you find more challenging or what are the bits of your job that perhaps are not as rewarding or as exciting as the other bits? I know Dan touched on this with a lot of his um, talk through the PGC. Um, I'm not my job is not turn up in the classroom at nine o'clock and you know play through learning and you know do all the smiling and then I'm out the door at three o'clock there is a vast amount of planning and preparation that's involved in that and um, you know you cannot with primary children in particular and the younger down you go there's no time to step out step back and retack you have to know what you're doing from the beginning of the morning there may not be time to run out and grab something from the photocopier there may not be time to you know deal with technology technology issues and then everything that you do because you absolutely must show value to what the children have done needs to be marked assessed and then that goes into the planning cycle so I think I you know it's part of the job it's part of the job I sign up for it's been long you know I've been doing it a while now but if anything I sort of enjoy less is that stuff that takes me away from the classroom um, last week I was out the classroom um, more than I was in for various, you know, various meeting here, birthday training there, um, subject leadership this. These are all very important. I've been teaching now nearly 10 years, um, so I'm actually not always in the classroom as I've sort of moved on my career. And anytime you're away from the kids, you then have to sort of make that time back up with them one way or the other. Um, so it's so anything that gets me away from the actual job is the bit that I enjoy less. <laughs> That's a good answer. Uh, I'm sure many teachers would say the same. So can I ask how you got into this role as a primary teacher from your degree in archaeology? Uh, problem, problem was twofold. Um, I was at York 
and I was doing, I, I was back, and this will date me to people, I took part in the student dig under what is now Hessington East. So it's been long enough that um, there's new bits of York than when I was there, and yeah. I was part of the archaeology there, and I was, I did that in my first year undergraduate dig, and in my second year I was a student supervisor. So I was well oh, into, yeah. I thought, I was like, I was like, I'm, I'm going to be a field archaeologist, this is it, I'm loving it. Yeah. And I actually very much enjoyed supervising and obviously teaching. And then also we did some community engagement around that. And actually, I think um, you spoke to Dr. Charlton uh, as part of one of these, and she did community engagement on that very same project so it was working with schools. And I started to get into the idea of actually there was more to archaeology than, you know, just the research and the digging. It was this kind of community engagement stuff was wonderful. So I started working with local primary schools, um, both in York, I did some walking tours and you know history talks for schools um, and also back home, I'm originally from Birmingham, I did some work with schools there as well. Um, so I started working with children to share that love of archaeology and I thought to myself, this is good, I'm enjoying this, I'm, you know, I like, love archaeology, it's fantastic, but actually this idea of engagement is even better. And I thought to myself, and I said the, the silliest thing, I said, I'm going to go and get a PGCE so I can be the best like engagement person I can be. I said, I'm going to go and like, I want to be an engagement officer in a museum or I want to work as a council and, and do that. And I'm going to go and train to teach because that will mean I'm even better at it. And, and we'll get into a bit about how I sort of stepped into that. But as I got more and more into the teaching warrior and I was like, nope, it's teaching I really love. I, it, it's the actual aspect of sharing knowledge and working with, with children and teaching is exactly what I want to do. So I got my PGC and I applied to be a teacher. I mean, I knew, I knew during the PGC actually that my original plan was not for me. I wanted that. It was working in the classroom is what I wanted. Um, I actually discovered that on the, on the way through. Um, but we might get into sort of tips of what, how I think you should get there. We'll, we'll save that one. Yeah, but later on in the interview. Yeah, yeah, that's really lovely. I think archaeology, it's great to hear that sort of your archaeology degree gave you an opportunity through outreach activities to sort of find the mm. thing that you love doing. And, and, and I imagine you do get to use archaeology in what you're doing now as a primary yeah. school teacher. Um, maybe you could talk a little bit about that then. How do you think some of the, the learning that you did in your degree, perhaps both the content but also those transferable skills now feed into your, your role now as a teacher? I can do that in like in a, in a two-stepper. It's probably the easiest way. Yeah. The ways I use archaeology now I think is, is an easy one and then I can, I'll do transferable skills if that's right. Yeah. So yeah. the way that I, that I use archaeology it is wonderful to have a specialism that sort of takes you beyond like history and books. Children are used to learning history in books and there are lots of wonderful history books out there to teach them from. Having that understanding, and it is still a rarity, particularly in like the primary profession, I'm a resource within school when other teachers are doing work on the Stone Age or Tudors or something or Romans I've just helped um, year five do a, a module on Romans this year like have that extra understanding of like how we know these things where the information in those books has come from is really really wonderful and um, whether that is um, having a little bit of an insight into the absolutely atypical year six Egypt topic or I just think you remember during my PGCE again slightly dating myself yeah. was when um, Richard III was found in a car park and I did a series of lessons for each year group in school I went and talked to you know, I did a story about a king in reception all the way up to like some stuff on ethics about where he should be buried with year six and it's just that kind of that extra oh how fantastic that in. sounds amazing yeah and so I think you know when and I'll be speaking to people with that when you are a teacher if that's what you want to be doing don't be shy about your archaeology background it's interesting particularly to children um rightly or wrongly I, there's six or seven um children in my class who are behind this wall like <laughs> pointing um who at the moment think archaeology is the absolute best thing ever and they're genuinely interested and then also the people around you will be resources i use archaeologists that i know um have come and well this year have done zooms mm -hmm. and have sent things in um Again, I think you spoke to Dr. Charlton before. Yeah, um, we did, she, yes. 
she's been um, she's spoken to classes of mine as a both an archaeological scientist but a woman in the scientist like I'm I, I unashamedly use my archaeology connections in the classroom yeah. my partner is a finds officer at a unit and she often sends us things in to look at and it's amazing for the children to be able to have archaeology in the classroom we had some um, Roman pottery you know for us it's shirts yeah. for the children it was magical to okay. have it in the classroom and that wouldn't happen if I didn't if I wasn't confident in it yeah so there's that aspect of it that's how I use archaeology in my job mm. what I've taken from my degree at York is the it was the ability to learn and teach as I learn so uh, I and I, I've spoken about it in the past um, both to colleagues and to you know other people who went to York the assessed lecture that I had to do and the assessed seminar module was the best prep, little did I know it at the time, for teaching. And I would sort of I would recommend anybody who was teaching to do that kind of thing during their degree, that ability mm -hmm. to take something, plan a lesson, literally, you know, take a, a, a concept and what you want to teach somebody and how you're going to engage them about, about it, um, how to engage, mm -hmm. A, a bunch of people about something and then also you know because again something I enjoyed so much about the assess seminar module is being part of everybody else's sort of learning process like I saw at the time eight radically different teaching styles it's just something that you know comes up a lot in my job like everyone teaches differently no one teaches the same and no one should teach the same and so like even at that early stage I was seeing how different people could engage the same group of people about the same subject sort of you know I did I did Mesolithic I saw eight Mesolithic seminars about similarish topics wonderful topics but they were all delivered really differently and so that was a, a fantastic thing um, and then yeah dovetailing in archaeology is a multi-discipline my job is multi-multi-discipline and the I took I did a huge amount of engagement and like external stuff through York I took a lot of opportunities and then even the teeny teeny little stuff I got I was lucky enough to with York go away and dig in France um, and so now I'm all more confident teacher of French it's even little things like everything that you do during your degree if you choose to go on and teach which really is the kind of jack of all trades master of none to keep yeah. truth primary <laughs> everything that you will have done in your slightly jack of all trades archaeology degree will stand you in good stead i think is the best way to say it yeah oh that's a fantastic answer i i can see maybe that um uh, the assessed seminars we should be shouting them from the rooftops about them because so many people I've spoken to here have just remembered them and certainly from my perspective teaching them they're just such a fantastic experience mm. but I think there's also something there you said about recognizing the difference between people and how you don't just take one approach to solving a problem there's not just one right way but there's all these different ways that lead to, to different things and I think lots of people can relate to that and seeing that in their in their careers so my final question for you then is what advice would you give to graduates who have been listening to this inspired by what you're saying and think maybe teaching is for them it's toughest at the moment while we're still slightly covid -y, but you've got to get into a classroom and see teachers and schools are always crying out for volunteers these days we obviously quite rightly need a dds check if you're going to be in a classroom with children but almost every school in the country would love someone in to help out hear some readers, come and offer to talk about after if they're doing any topics and, you know, even offering some advice about knowledge, you'd be surprised, you know, we're expected, you know, to know how to teach about the Paleolithic, although we'll call it the Stone Age kind of thing. If, yeah. if you can offer us some information, then we'll bite your hand off, but get in the classroom, see if it's for you. In a completely non-exclusionary, non-elitist way, it is not for everyone. Um, and it's tough so you have to love it I think hopefully it's come across that I absolutely love my job mm -hmm. but that's what gets me through the 30 reports that are waiting for me to do in the half term or the stack of maths books that's behind my laptop to mark <laughs> or the fact that you know I'm going to be going away on PGL in a week's time away from home like mm -hmm. these are the things that get me through this the fact I love the job and I knew I loved the job because I didn't go straight into it. I worked in a climbing shop for a year and volunteered 
a uh, day a week for a year. I, I think maybe that would be overkill for some people. Mm-hmm. I wanted to know for certain that this is what I wanted to do before I made the jump. So yeah, my advice, my one piece of advice is simple but difficult. Find a way to give it a go properly. Yeah. Um, and if you if you like it, I've got some good or bad news for you. You <laughs> might just be a teacher and you'll be stuck doing this for a long time in a very positive way. <laughs> Your enthusiasm certainly does shine through. Could I ask a little bit about why you chose primary rather than secondary? It's really simple and it maybe has come through as I've spoken, but yeah, it's good to be very specific. I obviously probably could have been pretty good secondary school history teacher or even a geography teacher, not to say that that's um, necessarily like an archaeology thing, but I was also in the mountaineering and climbing clubs. I've loved the outdoors and have a good knowledge of that. I like the variety of primary. If I was a history teacher, and then I would probably be teaching a similar lesson quite often. And again, as we've spoken about in that seminar, maybe find ways to differentiate that for different classes, but I didn't want to do like the Norman invasion five times in one week for year seven, as much as that is an absolute essential. And some people love that kind of ability to really hone in on that. As I said, right at the beginning, like this week I have taught music, art, um, angles, reading, and I took them swimming and I have missed out on teaching them religious education this afternoon to talk to you guys. Yes. It's that kind of absolute variety. Um, so if you like to never quite know which day is going to be the same, then primary is your thing. If you want to be and share that specialism, then you'll be a wonderful secondary teacher. Okay, thank you so much. Thank you so much for, well, missing out on RE to come and talk to us. It's been really valuable um, and for sharing your enthusiasm about teaching and about primary education and giving us your advice. So thank you so much to Rob for joining us. Thank you so much to you for making the time to listen to this uh, chat that we've had today. Join us again next time for more top tips for archaeology graduates.